My dad would tell me to kiss it. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson. Frogs are one of nature's coolest amphibians. They play an important part of local ecosystems and they help people by keeping bug populations from getting out of control. But did you know they have an amazing adaptation to get through the winter? They actually freeze solid, which is why I'm here at Mount St. Joseph University to see Dr. Clara Duamaral. She researches how frogs are able to do this. Let's hop over to her lab and find out more. So hi, my name is Clara Dumaral, and I'm an assistant professor at Mount St. Joseph University. So uh, there are certain species of frogs that overwinter in places where, they, where their body temperature closely follows the temperature of winter. So when it gets low enough, the animal may actually freeze. So I, I joined this lab uh, for my PhD that worked in freeze-tolerant animals, and I just thought it was a really interesting problem. I had never heard about it until, you know, recently at that time. Uh, and so I started working with them and it was just so fascinating, uh, it's, it was such a fascinating physiological response, like I'd never seen anything like that and it's just so, um, so cool, you know, there's all of these different, uh, you know, genetic and physiological specific features that they have and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. Hey Clara. Hey. How are you? Good, how are you? It's good to see you. Good to see you. So how in the world are frogs able to freeze solid and still survive? Great question. So there's a series of adaptations that they have that allow them to do that. So first of all, they're pretty good at surviving low temperatures in general. They also do fairly well with a lot of dehydration. So they can basically lose about half of their body water and still survive. And not only that, but they also can survive like a week without oxygen. So there's all of these things that they're naturally capable of doing. And then on top of all of that, they produce these chemicals that we call cryoprotectants. Cryoprotectants. Yes, and so these are compounds found in their blood that help to basically minimize the damage caused by freezing. So it's, they're kind of like uh, antifreeze. Yes, example. kind of antifreeze. You still have ice forming, but you have less ice than you normally would have. Okay. And not only that, but these chemicals also protect proteins in the cells and mem the membranes of the cell. So when the spring comes around and the weather gets warmer, they just kind of defrost? Yeah, so technically speaking, the temperature of the ground at least here in Ohio, is not like always below freezing. So even during winter, you have some warmer days, some cooler days, and so they're probably just like staying frozen for a couple of days and then thawing and then staying frozen again and then thawing. But yes, when spring comes and the temperature warms enough, then they will just permanently thaw and then they will hop on and do their frog life. So what, what does that mean for people? Like if, if frogs can freeze, how, how does that affect everyday people like you and me? Right, so, so basically, this work, we do this work to understand how, how these frogs actually can do it. And so the idea is if we can understand all the responses associated with being freeze tolerant, you can maybe extrapolate that, not to freeze a whole human, but, <laughs> right, but maybe you can take some of that and learn how to cryopreserve organs, right? That's something that we, right now you can't just take a heart and freeze it and right. then thaw it whenever you want to use it. Well, it doesn't work like that. Well, there's a lot of people who need organ transplants. Right. That could really help them. Exactly. So, so if we can find a way to basically cold store these organs for longer and using some of the strategies these animals are using, that may be a way in which this research can actually benefit humans in general. That's really cool. Yeah. Do you have any uh, specimens we can look at? Yes, I do, actually. All right. Oh my gosh. Take a look. That frog is completely frozen. Yeah. So you, you don't have any heartbeat. The animal is not breathing. As you can see, it's not moving. And you don't even have brain activity. So it's like flatlined. It's dead for all intents and purposes. Yeah. Except for that when it thaws, it will it's be alive. It's alive. Again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. It looks like it's like a. Um, like its limbs are swollen almost. Yeah, so, so when water freezes, it expands. And so what you're seeing is a lot of the water actually leaves the organs when the animal is slowly freezing and pools in certain places in the body, like the body cavity and to some extent the limbs. And so you'll, they look swollen because the ice is expanding and so it kind of makes it look a little bit bulgy. Oh, that's but cool. when it thaws, the water then goes back to the normal places and it will look like a normal frog again. Now what species of frog is this? So this is a wood frog. So you find these, um, you know, in basically North America. Okay. So United States, also Canada, 
all the way up to north of the Arctic Circle. Oh, wow. Yeah. So different, so frogs at different areas have different adaptations for how cold it gets. Yes, so, so basically there is, the frogs from northern places like Alaska are more freeze tolerant than frogs from southern places like Ohio. Absolutely. Gotcha. That's yes. so cool. And w so what time of year do these guys start waking up? So it depends. So they, they are one of the first frogs to wake up during spring, early spring. So something like a wood frog would be waking up mid-February to mid-March. And again, it just, it matches when temperatures are slightly higher and there's usually some warm winds and we see them coming out then. So how do you get these specimens like what like w w how do you get how do you go about gra getting them in the field right so you pay close attention to the weather <laughs> and then <laughs> and then when it looks like a warm night in mid february you basically drive around specific locations so these are not not found around cities they are found usually in in wooded areas they preferentially come out during these times to go mating and so you're looking basically for something like a temporary pond like a vernal pool of sorts and so you basically drive around and what you're listening for is their calling. So the males will call and so that's a sign that the animals are there. And so that's basically what I do. When the time comes, there are specific places that they're more likely to be found, historically speaking. And so then we drive around and look for them. So are you guys going anytime soon to go, go check out any frogs? Yes, as soon as it's a little bit warmer and some rain, we are going to go out and look for some tree frogs. That yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah. Do you want to come along? I would love to come along. <laughs> All right. That's, That's it. Well, that was awesome. I'm glad you had fun. That was fun. <laughs> that was so fun. I can't believe that's your job. You get to go out into yeah. the middle of the forest and catch frogs. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so one of the questions I have is, how is uh, climate change affecting these frogs? Uh, what, what's going on with their populations? Right, so, so it really depends on which populations we're talking about. But if we're talking about, again, I study frogs that survive the winter by being frozen. And so these frogs have evolved to basically be exposed to these low temperatures. And so what we see is if winters start to get milder, these frogs run out of their energy store sooner and they're actually not able to survive complete length of winter. So if they wake up too soon, there's no food for them to eat? Exactly. And so if there's no food for them to eat, they run out of energy and so they basically die. Well, thank you so much for taking me out. Uh, You're out here tonight, and it was it was so much fun, like uh, and and letting us tell your story about the about your work and the and the awesome things you're doing, learning about how frogs are able to do ha have this amazing adaptation. It's really really cool. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. It was fun. Thank you. Yeah. So and thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next time on Science Around Cincy. Get rolling. A little bit wet. Sorry. Everyone knows that frogs are nature's coolest and ah, sorry. But did you know that frogs have a fascinating, oh, I said fascinating twice. That worked for you? <laughs>